peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous, and in today's video, we're going to be testing out the zigzag line to satin feature in Inkscape. So let's get to it. So Dad, what is a zigzag line to satin feature? Well, it's a new feature that came out with InkStitch version 3.0, which makes it a ton easier in creating custom satin stitches. So in the past, we've showed how to make custom satin stitches, drawing out your own rungs and ladder kind of, but this is a much easier way using three different styles that you can manipulate to get even better results much, much faster. So Megan, what are those three different styles? Yeah, there's a square and there's a sawtooth and then there's a zigzag. So we'll go over those right now. And what their best use is for. So we're in Inkscape and we're just using our 4x4 hoop template and now we can show you where to locate this feature. Yes, yeah, so it's really easy to find if you go to Extensions, Ink Stitch, Tools, Satin, and then Zigzag Line to Satin. And that's where you can choose different settings. So in the past, we understand how to convert simple like lines into a satin or a stroke into a satin more commonly. But if you had more wavy type shapes that you wanted to be a satin stitch rather than a fill stitch, you would have had to go through the process of drawing out the rails and the rungs of a railroad track that identified to the program where and at what angle the stitches would go at. Well, it's much simpler now. And to show you kind of how that looks, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw like a, a long oval here because when you do a custom satin stitch, it's gonna vary in width. We'll go ahead and do a, a simple oval there. You can use any type of clip art you want. You just wanna keep in mind the distance between all your satin stitches. Absolutely. For this example, I'm just making this simple oval and I'm gonna make it white. And then I'm gonna use my Bezier tool to show you how this is done. So we're gonna first try the square method, showing how you're supposed to do this. Now in the past, again, what we would have had to do is draw a rung on the top side of this oval and a rung on the bottom side of this oval, shape it so it looks like an oval, and then draw a bunch of rungs uh, going vertically to show the direction that the satin will go. Well, now it's much easier. So we can just grab our Bezier tool and we can go ahead and identify the first spot that we're gonna use right there. And then we're just gonna draw a simple square, kind of zigzag really. So I want all the vertical lines to be all parallel to each other. And I'm gonna just hit control so it looks kind of perfect when it goes out. Not a necessary step, especially if you don't necessarily want your satin stitch to be all the same. Like if you were doing like a swoosh or something, you would want that to kind of flow. Whereas for this particular shape that we're doing, we kind of want it to be the same. So you can see here, I'm just following the shape of this oval, trying to be as close to the edge as possible. There we go. Now that we have our design, we can actually use this extension by going to extensions, ink stitch, tool satin, zigzag line to satin. And from here is where we can decide what style of the three zigzag lines to satin options that we can do. So we made a square path here. Right now we have square on and that's what we made it to look like. And we'll go ahead and show you what it would look like if we had the wrong setting on. Yeah, so if we drew it out like a square like we had, but we selected, say, sawtooth, we're gonna get much different results here. And this is not what we want. We wanna keep it on what setting we have. There's also other settings you can add, which is smoothing, which just makes it a little bit more circular, and then add rungs or reduce rungs. You're gonna wanna make sure you have add rungs on, but if you want a little bit less, you can just do reduce. Okay, I think that's good right there. We'll go ahead and hit apply. And you wanna make sure you don't hit apply more than one time or it's just gonna kind of jumble up what it looks like. Close and then we'll go ahead and look at this in params real quick. So there you have it, a very custom satin stitch that took about half the time it would have taken to draw out the rungs, curve them to the right shape, and then draw in those vertical lines. So much, much easier. Of course, I think the next few styles are even easier than this. And in params, you can treat this like a normal satin and customize the stitch length and all that stuff. For now, we'll just leave it simple and leave it like this. So we'll go ahead and show you the next style, which is the sawtooth one. So same deal, I want the lines to all be vertical, so I'm gonna hold control down while I make kind of the vertical sections of the sawtooth and then kind of go across and show you what this looks like. And the difference between this one and square is you're gonna make this in an end shape instead of rectangular. Same 
Same thing with this one, we're going to go ahead and turn it into our sawtooth. So you can see that this does not turn out nearly what we want it because it's in the wrong setting. So we're going to go ahead and click it to Sawtooth. And you can see pretty much the exact same results as if we did it this way or if we manually curved the lines. Which leads us to our next one, which is zigzag. Basically the difference between the zigzag one and the square and sawtooth one is each rung starts at a different point. For the zigzag one, it starts from the highest peak to the midpoint. And then for the square and sawtooth one, it's just each rung is basically the highest point of one and then the highest point of the other one. So they're a little bit different of where the rungs are. In my opinion, this is the easiest way to get a custom satin stitch because you do not need to be as precise as you were with the others. So I'm going to get my Bezier tool and I'm just going to start clicking along the edge. So here it is converted over and you can see that there are some issues here whereas on the other ones because i used that control key to make sure all my lines were vertical this would be a perfect you know vertical one side to the other but this one you can see that there are areas where that vertical rung is kind of tweaked over which would make it so that your vertical line while stitching out would kind of tweak over and then back over but it's easy enough to fix considering the way less points that you have to put on the oval here to get the same shape. Whereas right now, all I have to do is hit apply and close, go to my note tool right here, and just shift some things around so that I get vertical lines. And just like that, we've fixed this one. So I think this is probably the easiest one that you can do because getting that initial shape is so easy. So Megan, where would this come in the most handy in a project? I think it would be very helpful when you're doing lettering. We did a video a while back about creating your own custom lettering, but that's when we had to do our own railroad tracks for each little section. Yeah, it was quite the process just to get set up, let alone actually having to go through and manually trace every single letter and every single section of a letter. This is a lot easier process to do something like that. You want to show them? Let's do it. So if we were going to do, say, the letter D, pick a nice font for that. So just for demonstration purposes, we're going to choose this one. So when you're making your custom lettering, there's going to be different sections. So for this D, this line here would be a section, and then this part of the D here would be its own separate section. And in the past, we had to create manual rails and rungs of the train track to get those different sections, which is painstaking process, but it's much easier now. I'm just going to turn this white so we can see. Um, I'm going to use my Bezier tool and I'm just going to click on this and then I'm going to go and convert that. Perfect. And then I'll do this other section, give it a little bit of an overlap. I can just do some manual adjustments here to get this looking a little bit better, but even that is way better than having to draw out all of these little sections, right? That to me is where this really comes in handy if Definitely. you're going to be creating your own fonts for sure. So that's what it looked like in Prams, but this is really just a cool feature for whenever you need to use something with satin stitch. Yeah, so if it's just a way easier process of mm -hmm. creating a custom satin stitch. We'll go ahead and show you what it looks like when we embroider out the ovals, just to show you all the different settings we used. All the results seem to turn out very similar, so why would you use the different types? Really depends on the type of workflow that you like as well as the individual shape that mm -hmm. you're trying to mimic into a satin stitch. So though these three ovals turned out identical, which is 
kind of what we wanted out of this process. If we had a more complex shape, it may be more beneficial to use a different process to do that. My preference is the easiest, and zigzag stitch was the absolute easiest in my mind because it draws everything out for you, and it may not be perfect, but then you can just drag the nodes to make it perfect. It ultimately will just depend on which style you like to use, but you can see with three different styles, we got three identical results with our little ovals. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it. Like it. Subscribe if you enjoy our content. Subscribe. And turn on those notifications so you get reminded every single time we post a video. Stay crafty. And be happy. Bye. Hey peeps, welcome back to Project Anonymous, and in today's video, we're gonna be testing out the zigzag line. We're gonna be testing out the zigzag.